Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. Living in the countryside had always been a dream of mine. So when my husband and I inherited 21 acres of land from my family, we were over the moon. The property had an incredible view of the sun rising over the mountains, and the peaceful surroundings made it the perfect spot for us. We had even built a mountain biking trail deep in the woods thanks to my uncle's hard work before he passed away. Our neighbors had helped us maintain it over the years, but things changed when Karen came into the picture. At first, Karen seemed like a friendly neighbor. She would often come over to chat and bring us baked goods. But things started to change when she began insisting that we let her use our mountain biking trail. We had no problem with her using it, but she began to take over the trail, making modifications without our permission. One day, my husband and I went to use the trail, and we were shocked to see that Karen had put up a sign claiming that the trail was reserved for her and her family. We were outraged, and we confronted her about it. Karen became defensive and refused to take the sign down, claiming that she had put too much work into the trail. My husband and I decided that we needed to take action, but we didn't want to escalate the situation. We put up our own sign, stating that the trail was open to everyone, but that we were the owners of the property. Things only got worse from there. Karen began to make modifications to the trail that were dangerous and hazardous. She also started inviting all of her friends and family to use the trail, without our permission. It became a chaotic and dangerous situation, and we knew that we needed to do something. We decided to hire a lawyer, but we quickly learned that Karen was well-connected in the community. She had friends in high places and was able to use her influence to make things difficult for us. We were frustrated and overwhelmed, but we refused to give up. After months of back and forth, we finally went to court. It was a long and grueling process, but we were determined to win. In the end, we were able to prove that the land was rightfully ours, and that Karen had been trespassing. We thought that would be the end of it, but Karen was not willing to give up. She began to harass us, making our lives miserable. She would park her car in front of our house, play loud music late at night, and even vandalize our property. We tried to ignore her, but it was impossible. We decided to take matters into our own hands and set up cameras around our property. We were able to capture Karen in the act and we took the evidence to the police. Karen was charged with harassment and we finally had some peace. It's been a few years since the incident and Karen has since moved away. We have made some improvements to the mountain biking trail and it's once again a peaceful and enjoyable place to ride. We have also made some new friends in the community who have been incredibly supportive throughout our ordeal. In the end, we learned that standing up for ourselves was the right thing to do. We may have faced some challenges, but we were able to come out stronger on the other side. We hope that our experience can serve as a lesson to others who may find themselves in a similar situation. The next one is a pro-revenge story. My mom had a consistent habit of gossiping and sharing quite personal information. We knew she did it, but she would adamantly deny ever doing such a thing. I wish I could remember what she did that finally made me snap. It couldn't have been that important. It was just the millionth time, and for once I wanted her to admit what she'd done and know that we knew too. So we set up the sting. My friend Jane and I approached my mom and told her that Jane was pregnant. She wasn't ready to tell her mom yet and she was worried about what people would think about her having a baby so young. She didn't want anyone to know yet, so it had to be top secret. Having set the trap, I figured within a few weeks or so I would have some evidence we could use, but I was so, so wrong. The very next day, my sister, grandma, and neighbor all asked me how my young pregnant friend was doing. When a lady who worked at the supermarket asked me that same day, I figured this had gone far enough and went home to confront my mom, only to have my dad ask how Jane was doing. I confronted my mom right there in front of my dad, which is when she started with the usual, I would never do that, they must have heard from someone else routine. I explained very shortly and clearly that we had fed her a lie to see how far it spread, and the reaction was glorious. My mom's mouth fell open, and she just had nothing to say at all. My dad, on the other hand, fell back on the sofa, roaring with laughter, bemoaning the fact he hadn't thought of this years ago. It was a moment I will treasure forever, and the point was thoroughly made. Now that my mom was aware of what had happened, I was able to satisfy all further inquiries toward my friend's health with the true story and my mom's audience for any further gossip was somewhat reduced. The next one is a petty revenge story. Ever since I moved in a year ago, my neighbors have been nothing but annoying and rude to me. Background. They used to live in my house and now live in the house directly next door. Our street is a row of semi-detached townhouses. We share a wall, the front yard, and a front porch with a small divider. 
They sit on their front porch for the majority of the year. From morning to night, they are always out there. They have done a bunch of really annoying stuff, some outright rude, some of which I should have reported to bylaw, and I have had to install a camera because of theft. I can't say for sure if it was them, but I strongly suspect it because of the items taken. I found out that other neighbors don't like them either as I've started to meet people. The icing on the cake, as it were, was about two weeks ago. I did some major spring cleaning on the weekend and it was now Monday. Garbage day is on Tuesday at the crack of dawn. However, we've also had a skunk coyote problem and all three bags don't fit into my garbage canister. One has to stay out. So I put the bags on my front porch late afternoon right by the steps so they are ready and I can bring them out the next morning at 6.45 a.m. I leave to go grocery shopping. About 15 minutes later, while at the store, I start getting texts from other neighbors. She has taken a picture of my garbage on my porch and posted it on the neighborhood Facebook group. She is saying that I am young, lol I am 38, and lazy, occasionally fair, and this garbage has been smelling up her porch for weeks, 20 mins, and that it's now attracting rats, so be careful at the park across the street. 99% of the comments to her post are trashing her, saying that she shouldn't air dirty laundry on Facebook and if it was a problem that she should call bylaw. I replied nicely, saying that I did spring cleaning and I didn't want it ripped to shreds at the curb, but also didn't want to miss the garbage man. Everybody understands. I actually made additional friends out of it, lol. However, I am fed up. I hate leaving my house or coming back to it as they are always on the shared porch and have often harassed me before this public shaming already. My kids don't like them either and my daughter asks me to check if she's there before she leaves to see her friends. I am sick of this place. I called my landlord and he says that as they are two separate properties that he just happens to manage, he can't do anything. The rental market is absolutely insane and I would never be able to find something for the price I pay here and I can't afford more. So what can I do? This is going to sound super silly, but I'm very happy with the results. I bought a wind chime. Not a twinkly one, but a real bonger of a wind chime. It's windy all the time. I hung it as close to their side as possible without it ever crossing to their side. None of my other neighbors hang out on their front porches anyway, so I am not bothering them. It's small. It's petty. It makes me giggle every time I leave the house and hear it. The next one is a petty revenge story. I have worked in my job for several years, and like any job, there are good employees and bad employees. When I started, there was one female co-worker who had been on the job for about 10 years. I will call her J, not because I don't want to call her out, but because I don't want to spell her four-syllable 18-character name every time. Jay was lazy. She would disappear for hours, not answer the radio when called, be on her phone when she was supposed to be working, take 20-minute bathroom breaks while we were swamped with work, claimed she was studying for school on her lunch break only for someone to wake her up after she missed her clock back in time by half an hour with no books in sight. But Jay had one habit that was infuriating to co-workers and administration alike. She was always late for work. At my job, you cannot leave until the person working next shows up. If Jay was 10 minutes late, it was a miracle. Once, she was three and a half hours late to relieve me, and the on-duty supervisor had to call someone to go knock on her door to wake her up. All I got were dirty looks from her when she finally got to work. One time, she kept showing up late, and another co-worker complained to her face. She purposely parked her car across the street and kept coming in later and later as the problem escalated. The other co-worker was put on an earlier shift just to end the problem. The worst time was when she disappeared for two months. My supervisor called her after three days of no show and left a message. Two days later, Jay had her mother call and say she was not ready to come back to work after a cousin died in Florida. Checking her Facebook account proved that Jay considered morning to be drinking at back bars every night. When Jay came back, she still had a job. We figured Jay was sleeping with one of the higher-ups, but we didn't have proof. Finally, we got a new district manager who was a hard-ass and made sure many of the rules that had been ignored were enforced. The job has mandatory testing given every so often to make sure we are compliant with state and federal regulations. Jay bombed out and was fired. Not a tear was shed on her last day. One day I received a call on the office phone. It was someone wanting to talk to a former co-worker who had quit due to health reasons. I asked why and found out that it was someone doing a background check on Jay. I was about to say that the employee wasn't working here anymore when the person on the other end said they were with a certain government agency think three-letter agency, and the former employee was a reference. I put the person on a brief hold, took a swig of water and answered as the former employee. Then I proceeded to tell all about Jay and her work habits. 
I did not embellish anything but also did not leave out any minor details. When I was finished, the person thanked me and hung up. This was about seven months ago. Today I found out from a co-worker who was on Facebook and saw Jay's complaint that she didn't get the government job she applied for. Petty revenge completed. The next one is an entitled people story. I am 23 years old and I am a very reserved person. I don't like to interact with other people, but I don't hate anyone. I have never been angry with a person because I assume that if you don't interfere with my life everything is fine. However, I have always been very close to my 17-year-old brother, even though he is very different from me, athletic, sociable, etc. And we have always shared our stuff since birth. Recently, he has started to become the little boss of the house with his parents buying him everything he wants despite his catastrophic grades. He smokes, drinks, and forces me to be mainly a cab driver. This puts a very bad atmosphere in the house with my mother yelling at him a lot. Fortunately, I bought my dream computer with a lot of work more than $5,000, and every night I lock myself in my room and code all night long or play video games. It's a little bit my quiet time between my very tiring engineering studies and the atmosphere at home. Then comes my six-month internship in a big city in another country, and at the beginning I find it very difficult to live alone in an apartment because I have never left my small city. But after a few weeks I really changed, which surprised me. I enjoyed going out with people, felt more confident, and even changed my clothing style to be more adult, which I loved. The bonus is that I started working out since I don't have my computer in my spare time. At the end of my internship, I go back home and find the same atmosphere as before, and nobody notices my change of appearance. I ignore this, and when I arrive at night I only want to find my computer to avoid the screams. But when I go back to my room it is not there anymore, so I ask my mother and she tells me that my brother sold it. At that point, my brain just paused, and it was ten seconds before I asked my mom if this was a joke. She says no, and I start to see red. I teleport to my brother's room and ask him why. He answers that it was to buy sneakers and clothes, and I ask him again, explaining this time that I want to know why he sold my computer because I didn't give him the right to do it and that I always use it for work. He laughs and tells me that I can buy another one and that $1,000 is nothing for me. When he tells me he sold it for $1,000, it's worth $5,000. Normally I would have run away to my room to swear, but here I get angry and grab his laptop before destroying it on the floor. The noise brings back my parents and my brother yells at me asking me what happened to me. I yell and explain that he had no right, that he is an ingrate and that I had worked for it, that it was mine. My father angrily tells me to keep my voice down and says that it's just a computer. I tell him with all my anger to shut up and that he should realize that it is not normal to steal people's things. I leave angry because even my parents do not support me, and I go to the police to file a complaint. As the value of the goods exceeds $1,000, proven by the purchase order, my brother risks prison because he is now 18 years old. My parents put pressure on me to drop the lawsuit against my brother, but I don't want to be with them anymore since they consider me a little less than nothing. But I am not afraid, and I went to the end of the procedure, and my brother must give me back $5,000 pay back my lawyer. He should have to do public works to pay back his debt, but my parents paid for him. My whole family hates me more or less now, and I cut off all ties with everyone. I am now living with a cousin, and I'm about to graduate, so I will soon have a job. I'm in a hurry to leave and not see my family again, which doesn't bother me because of the way they considered me. And I don't think I was wrong and that my action allowed my brother to question himself on the importance of work. My mother wanted to talk to me the other day, but I just told her that if she wants to be happy, she should quit my dad and I will be there for her. I hope she will make the right decision. The next one is an entitled parent story for context. Hi, I'm Crer, or as of late Delta Kruger, need to get that fixed. I'm the 27-year-old lad of this story. I am considered a high-functioning autistic individual, officially disabled by government standards. My mother, for a long time, but especially these past four years, has been taking in and managing my checks from the government to keep the household afloat, making use of everything but $100 of it, which often got absorbed in moments of crisis as well since I didn't spend much. While doing so, she was sowing seeds of doubt and fear into my mind about ever learning to live on my own, stating I was very far from ever reaching that. I myself didn't really try to struggle or push my way out, even when I turned 18. She offered to sign me up as a dependent, but I thankfully declined. I decided for the good of the family to keep working with them. That changed about four years ago. Four years ago my developmentally held back brain decided to say, 
oh, now it's time to teenager, and I suddenly craved independence, looking every which way for a way to flee gracefully. Every time, though, there was some unfortunate situation or action that meant that if I left with my two incomes, my mother became my PSW, which that has its own irony later on. The family would fall apart, and I'd be dooming all the animals, some of which were never listed on our lease at the time and were hidden every inspection. Now what happens when you cage a teenager that so desperately wants to be their own thing? They get rebellious. Three years ago, I got a therapist through my state insurance program, and after venting all the hoops my mom was making me jump through and all the work that was piled on me due to my mother's bum knee and the stupidly high expectations of me that would always end up creating screaming matches to her over those three years, she finally said to me as of roughly a week ago from this post, that literally sounds like an abuse case. I initially dismissed that and said, I'll keep it in mind, as we ended the call that day, only to then immediately after get chewed out for jumping on a request my mom made earlier in the day, as she had requested research for something that'd make another lengthy story. But regardless, she basically chewed me out for hounding her in an ill mental state due to the current situation, despite telling me five minutes prior to do the research for her. That's when I went back to my room and texted my therapist to start filling out the paperwork, one day later, Mom and I got into another spat, this time about the dishes which were my daily chore. Sure, it was assigned to me, but my drive to do crap for her was dead by that point when my effort can be shot down on a whim, even though it was ordered. The argument is hazy in my head for many reasons, but the main one is, Mom went feral the moment I snarked like a teen would. She slammed her way into my room to start grabbing crap and hucking it on the lawn, screaming for me to get out, breaking one of my monitors in the process. Dad stepped in and told her that since I was over 18 and on the lease, I was legally given 30 days notice, which is when she stopped, turned to me, said, well then I'm going to make those next 30 days hell for you, and walked to her room. Dad let me get the few things she did get on the lawn back inside at that point and I sat down. Then it dawned on me she played herself. For years she said that if I went away she would have to get rid of everything, and I mean everything. It was all propped up by my SSI and the income she got being my personal support worker. Well, now she had given me and the government valid reason with her behavior alone that even if she rescinded the 30-day notice, we couldn't keep our home anyways. It was refreshing. In that moment, I felt courage well up in my chest. She couldn't manipulate me anymore. She fell into what she had made of her life and was blind to my connections I made for years outside the family, constantly slamming them for being liberals. I took that renewed energy to reach out to those friends, those found families, my lovers, and even my grandparents. I looked through my cards and emails and found my disabilities care workers info and told of the situation and burnt the midnight oil chasing my new life while my mom literally pounded the adjacent wall between my bedroom and her bathroom, screaming like a banshee about not hearing me pack fast enough. To keep this from going on for ages, I'm going to be brief on the next few stages to now. Grandparents saw this explosion brewing for years, opened arms and let me take my belongings and my bearded dragon pancake in while mother was away on psychiatric care. With my caseworker's help, I got my SSDI under control, got guidance on what steps to take next, and they're doing research for intermediary places after grandparents. My boyfriend and I are looking into joining together and living somewhere in Washington with my found family chipping in as well. As of today, I'm officially disowned from my family, my mother has not only disowned my grandparents, but also forced dad to as well. I tried to contact them to drop me off the phone plan so I can keep my phone number and all I got was the statement of disownment and that further contact will lead to a restraining order. I got a special state-related order to have their firearms reclaimed since mother is a psychopath and have my grandparents locking their doors now out of fear. I'm waiting for my case manager to get back to me to have my documents extracted from their residence and basically all I got to do is play the waiting game watching my parents burn because mom pushed all their connections away. Even my brother who's stoic as all hell showed he was ready to fly too. So the main thing to take away from this is, learn to value yourself and judge the words of those closest to you for you never know if you're just a pay pig to your own mother. If people want, I can refine those breezed over parts, but that's enough to get the picture. Thank you for watching, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.